So the keyboard we're going to be discussing today, the Drop Shift, has been around for a minute, and by and large, the custom scene has come quite a ways since this board was originally introduced. We're going to be taking a look at this particular build today to see how this has held up over time and uh, where there could stand to be maybe some improvements made to its design. Now remember, on your way out, if you like what you saw here and you want to get some more deep dives into the more bespoke aspects of custom mechanical keyboards, PC hardware, and beyond, Make sure you hit the thumbs up button on the way out and get subscribed and notified so you don't miss any of our content when it goes live. The Drop Shift has a bare bones MSRP of 195 US and is typically in stock at drop.com. Links for this and everything else in the video down in the description. The feature list includes an integrated plate design, three pin hot swap sockets, dual USB-C ports with pass through support, per key RGB lighting with a diffusion layer for perimeter RGB, plate mount stabs, QMK compatibility, all in what's referred to as an 1800 layout. Researching this layout with some cursory results indicates it's named after the 1800 models of Cherry's own G80 and G81 line of keyboards, which are considered to be the forebearers of the design. Build quality here is really solid. This thing feels like if it ever stops working, you can at least practically defend yourself with it in the event of a zombie outbreak or something. And its fully built weight of a little over a kilogram sort of drives that point home. You can add on some magnetic feet at the bottom if you prefer your board to have more of a typing angle. However, I don't presently have those on hand to demonstrate, so we'll be seeing the flat stock position, which I'm personally a big fan of when using a taller set of caps like these PBT Die Sub SA caps from KBD fans. But your mileage may vary. It is my understanding that if you're a bit fidgety with your keyboard, the magnetic feet have a tendency to sometimes wobble and fall out of place. I'm not entirely sure how common that is. Your mileage may vary, but Personally speaking, I would like to see inbuilt pop-out feet in future revisions of this board. Now, 1800 layout has some variation from board to board in terms of switch placement included switch ports, but the drop shift represents one of the more common layouts, with mild blocking between the right side modifiers, numpad cluster, and arrow keys, with all the nav keys typically present in these regions removed to retain a reasonably compact footprint with mostly full-size functionality. In using a keyboard tester, it looks like there's only about four or so functions you're missing with the default layout, and they're not too commonly used in my personal experience, but with this being QMK compatible, that's a relatively easy fix. The integrated plate design may seem like a bit of a cheap move, and compared to other boards in a similar price point, you might be tempted to think it's a bad move. But with the board being as solidly built as it is, the only downside I get from this thing is that bottom mount's gonna be firm rather than cushioned like a gasket mount or other similar suspension or isolation based mounting system. Thankfully in use, the board actually feels and sounds really nice across. Plus having a simpler integrated plate design makes it more accessible to a newbie to the scene uh, to do some custom things with it later on. Three pin hot swap sockets may have been passable in the past, but if they want to modernize this board, they need to at least update it with some five pin hot swap sockets so keyboard builders don't have to clip switch legs to use them here. South facing would be really nice to ensure cherry profile compatibility as well. The dual USB-C thing reminds me of the argument that you should respect your audience's time with your content, and in larger keyboards, you should respect your target audience's desk space. If that board is going to be as big as this thing is, that space needs to be able to be put to good use, and having USB-C pass-through capabilities and, in turn, two different spots to plug in the power cable gives this board a nice bit of added flexibility that I honestly love to see in almost any form factor. RGB lighting looks pretty good all around, though this particular board is using KS8 Gateron Red, so there's really not any light coming through the sockets due to the nylon bottom housing being designed for through-hole LEDs. Diffusion along the perimeter looks pretty decent so long as you aren't looking at it dead on, but if you're ever in a position that you do, you may notice some hot spots from where the LEDs are positioned. It's not really garish or overbright, and if you don't like it, you can just turn it off. The presence of plate mount stabs here feels kind of bad at this price point, and given the quality of the stock drop stabs, it kind of is, but hear me out. Plate mount stabs, if they fit well, can be a godsend in this scenario, especially if you're learning how to tune stabilizers and need easy access to them in order to clean them and redo them. We're using some cherry stabs here again. Other solid options include Duroc, Novel Keys, and Join-In Keys stabilizers, which will be featured in some upcoming content. Like other QMK compatible devices, you have the power to address your key layout to be nearly whatever you want it to be. However, I can't seem to find this keyboard in QMK configuration tool, so you may either need to use a different file or key structure that I'm not familiar with, or you use the drop keyboard configurator. 
It's mostly a point and click adventure with the drop keyboard configurator. Once you're all said and done with everything, download the hex file and then use QMK Toolbox to update the firmware. It's much easier to do after you've done this the first time, and a lot less scary. QMK or VIA compatibility has become a big selling point for keyboards these days, and I'm glad to see Drop's lineup has largely had it since day one. One word, balanced. At least this specific drop shift is really balanced. The combination of a light linear switch with the tall SA profile and a flat laying position, a uh, typing angle otherwise, that's, <laughs> this was surprisingly comfortable for me. Even in gaming, uh, I was able to comfortably position this so that my left hand and my right hand were both plenty comfortable for multi hour long gaming sessions. Uh, but I still had enough room off to the right to keep my mouse from colliding with the side of the keyboard. And that's a problem that I've historically had with full-size keyboards because I use lower DPI settings when I game. But in the same token, if I wanted to then wrap up the gaming session and then go over to the spreadsheet that I was working on, my numpad is right here. It's, it's not another cable and another peripheral and potentially another driver or other bit of software on your computer to need to manage it as well. Some people don't want to have to deal with that complication on their desktop. And really in general, the, the sound and the feel of this board is, is really nice. It, the main things that I have that I have an issue with at this nearly $200 price point is honestly those three pin hot swap sockets and the stabilizers. Drop is, guys, Drop is plenty aware of how terrible the stock stabilizers were on their keyboards. Uh, I'm hoping they do something about it, but I do at least know they're aware of how those are typically received. And then the hot swap sockets. It's not so much the three pinness of them. You can clip your switch legs if you want to, but frankly, if you're investing in a board layout with a south facing socket, you might as well go the extra mile and make it five pin anyway. The point of south facing is to make sure your switch is gonna be oriented in such a way that you can use cherry profile keycaps along with every other profile out there. That's the main limitation of north facing sockets. But if none of those things matter to you, then I honestly feel like the drop shift still kinda holds up today. Yes, there are definitely opportunities for improvement here, but in general, it still seems like a solid board. But maybe I'm completely wrong and you have an opinion that bests mine entirely. Please sound off in the comments below for some respectful discussion on the matter. I always love to get feedback from you all in these videos, especially if I miss something in them. Also, comment below, would you like to see more full size or full-ish size in stock keyboard options out there? I mean, there has to be, there has to be a market for that, right? Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.